Hydrotin, aka expanded clay pebbles, are little brown balls that can be used as hydroponic growing media. That is a replacement for soil or as a potting mix amendment to increase overall drainage. They're made from naturally sourced clay pellets, the purer the better, and heated in a kiln to well over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, each one with aerated porous cores. Hydrotin is pH neutral, reusable, and most importantly, it's super easy to use once you understand its basic properties, which I'll get on to in just a second. First things first, always rinse your balls thoroughly before you put them to work. Even if the manufacturer claims that they're already washed or even double washed, they will inevitably rub together during transport and all that friction between the balls, ouch, creates dust in the sack and risks clogging your pumps, my friends. My technique is to sit the bag in the sink or the bathtub, stir up the bottom a bunch of times with a screwdriver and once all of your stress has dissipated, open up the top of the bag and run tap water through until the runoff is clear. Be sure that the balls get wet. A hose or a pipe or a jug can help too. After rinsing, some folks soak their clay balls in pH 5.5 water. Personally, I don't see the need. They're pH neutral and absorb very little water anyway, so you're not going to change that. Being clay, hydrogen has a high cation exchange capacity, which means it clings on to positively charged ions. But I just see this as a reason to irrigate frequently rather than to pre-soak. However, if you do want to give your balls a soak before use, then no harm done amigos. To understand how to irrigate hydrogen properly, this simple experiment is quite informative. Take 5 grams of dry clay balls, or 4.998 grams, or... yeah, it's close enough. Next, put them in some water. As you can see, some float, some don't. Don't worry about it, it's all good. Now weigh the wet balls at 5.38 grams, an increase of around 7.5%. Interestingly, letting the balls soak for 8 hours increase their weight to around 5.7 grams, an increase of around 15% from dry. So yes, a long soak does increase water content, but if you want to go that route, I think it would make more sense to soak in a mild vegetative nutrient solution at around pH 6 rather than plain water at pH 5.5. Anyway, soak or no soak, compare hydrogen with this Grodan AOK Stonewall Cube. It weighs just 3.1 grams. Ah, but submerge this puppy in water, give it a shake and re-weigh it and <laughs> it's too heavy for my jeweler's scales. I have to weigh it in parts. Altogether, it weighs around 40 grams, an increase of over 1100% people as opposed to when it was dry. Unsurprisingly then, hydrogen needs to be irrigated in a very different way compared to stonewool, coca coir, peat-based potting mixes, or soil for that matter. And this is precisely what I love about hydrogen. You really can't overwater it. Growers tend to irrigate in two ways. Top dripper feed, usually via a dripper ring or in an ebb and flow table. In either case, you're going to need to use hydroponic mineral nutrients. Here's an example of top feeding with a dripper ring. A water farm by General Hydroponics. A classic self-contained hydroponic system. Fill it with clay balls, insert your plant, switch on the pump, and let it drip. Constantly, 20 24-7. No need to dial in any irrigation cycles whatsoever. The little air gaps between the spherical balls as well as the porous cores ensure that the roots are never starved of oxygen. It is Genius, my friends. Genius. Ebb and flow. Basically, you can fill pots with hydrogen and then sit them in it. Or you can fill the whole tray with hydrogen. Here, as you can see, I've done the latter. The grow tray in this system by General Hydroponics Europe can accommodate up to a 6-inch depth of hydrogen. Although I've got about 4 inches here. I started out with just 2 inches of hydrogen from my Thai basil seedlings, but you can see that's just not sufficient. The roots have barely explored more than a few inches away from the plant. When I bury my GoPro camera with its lens facing upwards in the clay balls, you can see the light gets in and that will discourage the roots from spreading out. Four inches is your minimum depth of hydrogen if filling the whole grow tray. Better to go for five or more if growing for bigger plants. Hydrogen anchors them really well and some folks cover the tray with a sheet of blackout plastic and cut little holes for the plants to grow through in an effort to black out the light and encourage the roots to explore the upper layer of the clay balls. You'll notice some surface imperfections on the clay balls. This isn't a bad thing as it lets more water into the porous core. As for irrigating, go regular. Timing exactly how long it takes to flood the tray. It shouldn't take more than a minute per inch of depth. My tray floods in three minutes. I use a digital timer like an Apollo 11 to flood every hour for three minutes each time during the light cycle. That's 18 on-off schedules per day. It can handle up to 20 and I promise you this is not too much. Big thirsty flowering plants can take floods every half an hour or more in straight hydrogen. Like I said, this is not stone wool or cocoa coir or soil. You have to treat it differently. Now some growers mix in 10 to 20 percent grow down mini cubes to provide for more of a moisture buffer just in case a pump or timer should fail. It also affords towards less regular irrigation. Other growers mix in diahydro, rocks of diatomaceous earth, at similar ratios to provide a source of silicon and a little more absorbency. You can use hydrogen as a propagation media, but I prefer to start with stone wool. If you're using an aero cloner, I recommend inserting your rooted cuttings into a net pot, backfilling with hydrogen, and then inserting the pot into your hydrogen bed. For leafy crops like my Thai basil, you can pull out the plants when you're done and simply replant with new ones. Use an enzyme product to help digest any remaining roots. You can reuse 
hydrogen if you pull out any old roots and sterilize it in hydrogen peroxide solution. I'll go through that in a separate video if you're interested. Okay, thanks for watching. Questions and comments below. As always, see you again soon. Bye bye. Oh, don't squeeze too tight.